Welcome back. We're on to equation solving, which is in Chapter 4 of the textbook. In your packet, we're on page 3, and uh, this goes along with the textbook pages 197 to 202. We're going to talk about two-step equations today. Equation solving is always a working backwards technique. So you work through the order of operations backwards. So you're going to look for adding and subtracting first, multiplying and dividing second, anything with an exponent third, and parentheses or grouping symbols last. So we're going to work in the inverse of the order of operations. So we're going to look for adding and subtracting first, then multiplying and dividing. You may remember this from last year from sixth grade. Here's an example worked out for you. The equation is 3n minus 5 equals 16. Undoing that adding uh, or subtracting of 5 by adding 5 first, we get 3n is 21. Dividing by 3 on both sides, you get n equals 7. To check this answer, we'll check here, you're going to rewrite the problem. You're going to replace the variable with what you believe the answer is, n equals 7. So 3 times 7, we're going to put that into the solution here. 3 times 7 is 21. 21 minus 5 does it equal 16. 16 equals 16. Yippee, we've got the right answer. So we can go on to the next problem. So we're going to solve and check some two-step. They're called two-steps because they have two operations in them. So we have the equation 2t plus 7 equals negative 1. It does have an adding part to it and multiplying. We're going to undo the adding first, which the opposite, the inverse of adding, is subtracting 7. And I'm going to subtract 7 on both sides. And for those of you that draw the railroad tracks, you can draw them, but I'm going to ask if eventually that you stop drawing them and you just get the idea of balancing the equation by doing the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. So adding 7 and subtracting 7 are opposites. They make 0. So on the left side of the equation, or in the left member, I have two t's left equals, I have negative 1 and negative 7 on the right side of the equation, same signs, add and keep, I get negative 8. 2t is equal to negative 8, so 2 times what number t equals negative 8? The opposite of multiplying is dividing by 2, so I'm going to show division by 2 by using my fraction bar, my fraction line there, 2 divided by 2 cancels, I get 1t, which I don't have to show the 1, t is equal to negative 8 divided by positive 2 gives me a negative 4 answer. The check mark here reminds me that I'm going to do a check, writing the word check. You have to rewrite the original equation as given, 2t plus 7 equals negative 1. I'm going to substitute or replace the variable t as negative 4, I believe that's the answer, 2 times negative 4 plus 7, does it equal negative 1? Well, now because I do know the variable's value, I am going to do the correct order of operations. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 7, does that equal negative 1? Now this step, I don't have to show this negative 8 plus 7. I could do that part in my head and say, oh, okay, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 plus 7, negative 8 plus 7, difference on, subtract, I get negative 1. Negative 1 equals negative 1. Yippee, I've got the right answer. So negative 4 must be the solution to this equation. Example number 3 here. 2 thirds times n minus 7 equals 13. Well, I have subtract and multiply. I'm going to do the opposite of the subtraction first, which is adding 7 to both sides. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides first. Negative 7 and positive 7 are opposites. They cancel to 0. So I bring down what math I have not worked on, which is the multiplying. And on the right side, I have 13 plus 7, which equals 20. Two-thirds of what number equals 20? Well, 
The opposite of multiplying by two-thirds is to divide by two-thirds. But I know dividing by a fraction is the same math as multiplying by the multiplicative inverse, three-halves. So I'm going to multiply both sides by three-halves. My threes cross-cancel, my twos cross-cancel, and my multiplication cancels to one M. So I have N on the left side, and 20 times 3 halves. Well, my 2 goes into 20. I can cross-cancel that 10 times. 10 times 3 is 30. So I believe the answer is N equals 30. I have to do a check on that problem. So, whoops, went up too far. I'm going to write the word check. The equation is 2 thirds of n minus 7 equals 13. I believe my n value is 30. So 2 thirds times 30, if I'm going to write as a fraction here, minus 7 equals 13. 3 goes into 30 10 times. I can cross cancel there. So I have 2 times 10 is 20. 20 take away 7 is 13, so I have 13 on the left side, which equals 13 on the right side. Yippee, I have the right answer. The answer to my equation is n equals 30. My equation is balanced to 13 equals 13 when I replace the variable n with 30. So my bottom of my check does not show the answer to the problem. It's not showing me for instance, that negative 4 equals negative 4 here in number 2, it's showing me that my when I put in negative 4 into this equation, my equation is balanced at negative 1 equaling negative 1. Same thing with example 3. The bottom of my check down here does not say 30 equals 30. It says when I put 30 in for this value of n, my equation is balanced to 13 equals 13. The answer is the solution is n equals 30. The check, the balance equation is 13 equals 13. They are two different things. Sometimes students mix that up a little bit. The next page, I have an example worked out again, so you can follow this. It's uh, D divided by 3 plus 2 equals negative 8. So it has adding and division in it. The opposite of adding is subtracting 2. Bring that on both sides. Bringing down what you haven't done, D over 3. The opposite of dividing by 3 is multiplying by 3 on both sides. And yes, negative 10 times 3 does equal 30. The check. So my answer is D equals negative 30. When putting that in for the value D, my equation is balanced. The left side equals the right side. It is completely balanced. Negative 8 equals negative 8. Yippee. Example 3 here says Y divided by negative 10 plus 3 and 4 tenths equals 1 and 3rd tenth. So I have adding and division. The opposite is to subtract first and then multiply. So I'm going to do the opposite of adding 3 and 4 tenths and I'm going to subtract 3 and 4 tenths from both sides. They cancel on the left. I get y divided by negative 10 equals. Now I have a problem over here on the right because my larger absolute value number is below my lower absolute value number. So I might have to rewrite this subtraction off to the side here. 3 and 4 tenths, because 1 take away 3 and 4 tenths is going to give me a negative answer. But to subtract it, just like my second grade teacher always said, oh honey, the largest number has to be on top. So you do have to put the 3 and 4 tenths on top. Subtract the 1 and 3 tenths, and you get 2 and the 1 tenth. And yes, it's going to be negative 2 and 1 tenth because I'm taking away a larger absolute value number there, negative 3 and 4 tenths. So now my equation says y divided by negative 10 equals negative 2 and 1 tenth. 
So I'm going to do the opposite of division, which is multiplying by negative 10. Yes, I can put it over 1. And I'm going to multiply by negative 10 over here on the right side. Those negative 10s cancel. I get y equals negative 2 and 1 tenth times negative 10 is going to give me a positive answer there. 2 and 1 tenth times 10. I know when I multiply by 10, my decimal moves one place to the right. Or come to the side here, multiply by 10, and you will see that you get 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is one decimal in the answer. So yes, my answer does, the decimal does move over to make it 21. And the answer is positive 21. To check this equation, I'm going to write the word check. The original equation states y divided by negative 10 plus 3 and 4 tenths equals 1 and 3 tenths. I'm going to place my value of 21, positive 21, I believe is the answer, divided by negative 10, replacing my variable with what I believe my solution is, 21, equals 1 and 3 tenths. 21 divided by negative 10 gives me negative 2 and 1 tenth, plus a positive 3 and 4 tenths. Does that equal 1 and 3 tenths? So I have different signs, subtract 3 and 4 tenths, subtracting 2 and 1 tenth, 4 take away 1 is 3, and on my decimal, 3 take away 2 is 1. Yes, I do get 1 and 3 tenths on the left side of my equation, it's called the left member, and 1 and 3 tenths on the right side of my equation, which is called the right number. Yippee, it worked. So my solution is y equals 21, or my answer is y equals 21. Last one, number four. 5 take away h divided by 9 equals negative 12. Well, I have a division and I have an adding of positive 5. Don't think that that's minusing 5. In front of that 5 is a positive sign. It's not there. But we know that that's positive 5. So it's like adding 5 to the division of h divided by that negative 9 there. So I'm going to subtract 5. Don't be fooled by that. I'm going to subtract 5 because that really is a positive 5 there. So I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides first. Those cancel. My positive 5 there with my negative 5 cancels. I'm going to bring down my division of h over 9, which is negative h over 9. Remember that sign, look left, that's a negative h over 9, equals negative 12 and negative 5. Same signs, add and keep. So that's negative 17. Oh, that doesn't look very neat. Negative 17. So what number, when divided by negative 9, equals negative 17? Well, the opposite of dividing by negative 9 is to multiply by negative 9. It's going to cancel those negatives. It's going to cancel the 9s. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to multiply by negative 9 on the right side as well. That's the balance idea, doing it on both sides of the equation. My negative 9s cancel on the left member, and I get positive h, which is what I have to solve for, equals negative 17 times negative 9. Well, negative 17 times 9, a negative times a negative is a positive value. 17 times 9, 9 times 7 is 63, carry the 6, 9 times 1 is 9, and 6 is 15. So I believe the solution or the answer is 153. So check the equation. Yes, we are always going to check. This is a formal check, I'm writing it all out. 5, take away h divided by 9, equals negative 12, 5, and I believe my value for h is a positive 153 over 9, equals negative 12. So now, to check my 
multiplication, which I did in the equation part over here. Yes, to check multiplication, I'm going to do division. 153 divided by 9. 9 goes into 15 once. When I subtract, I get 63. 9 goes into 63 17 times. So I have 5 take away this division here is 17. Does that equal negative 12? 5 take away 17, or 5 and negative 17, or 5 and negative 17. So different signs. Subtract. 17 take away 5 is 12. Take the sign of the larger absolute value, which is that negative 17. So negative 12. Oh, yes, that was what I wanted it to balance to. On the right-hand side is the negative 12. Yippee correct solution. So the answer to the equation is not negative 12. The answer to the equation is h equals positive 153. And when you put that into the equation, it does balance both the left side and the right side are the exact same thing. They come out to be negative 12. So that's what's called a balanced equation. So two-step equations today. We're going to work on those in class. So be ready to equation solve.